In the first video of this series, we discussed some key concepts in biology that you need to understand. In the second video, we talked about the first mechanism of evolution, mutation, which, along with genetic recombination, generated the necessary genetic variation within populations to move evolution along. Now, we are going to talk about the remaining mechanisms of evolution, selective and non-selective ones. They are natural, sexual, and artificial selection, the founder effect, genetic drift, and gene flow. Let's jump right in. First, we'll discuss the selective mechanisms, i.e. artificial, natural, and sexual selection. Artificial selection is the process whereby humans choose which organisms reproduce and pass their genes on to progeny. Examples are cows, dogs, horses, and innumerable fruits and vegetables. Over the years, some naturalists figured out that nature did something akin to artificial selection, but none of them explained the concept in detail, at least that was until Charles Darwin came along. Natural selection was first formally described by Darwin in his 1859 book On the Origin of Species, in which he concluded that nature selects which organisms pass traits onto their progeny. He reasoned that there was no hand guiding this process of descent with modification, but instead thought that organisms that were fit enough to survive did, reproducing and passing on their traits. He was correct. Darwin was also the first to evidentially articulate the idea that some organisms choose mates based on, in a sense, beauty. This is sexual selection. Peahens will, for instance, choose peafowls with brightly colored tail feathers, and this has been going on for long enough that modern peafowls have evolved extremely extravagant feathers. But natural selection can also work in opposition to sexual selection. An example would be, again, peahens selecting peafowls. If a peafowl has an epistatic mutation, that is, in this case, a gene that causes it to become albino, then the females will not choose that peafowl as a mate. Thus, albino peafowls will be removed from the population. Another example would be guppies. In nature, male guppies are not particularly colorful because they must balance beauty for females with camouflage from predation. In environments where there are no predators, the male guppies become very colorful. Artificial selection of guppies can make them even more colorful. Now, what about non-selective mechanisms of evolution? In very small populations of organisms, the founder effect and genetic drift can greatly magnify certain traits. If, for example, a small population of penguins were to move to a place uninhabited by any other penguins they could mate with, and those penguins were to reproduce and grow in population size, then the founder effect might cause one or more genes to predominate in a population, causing a loss of genetic diversity. Genetic drift is similar. A gene that does not necessarily have any benefits may come to predominate in a population due simply to the random sampling of genes in that population. For example, among Amish communities in Pennsylvania, Ellis Van Crevold syndrome has become very prevalent because two members of the colony in 1744 had the syndrome. After years of interbreeding, the syndrome has spread throughout the population. It is important to remember that the mechanisms of evolution with selection in the name aren't in any way random. Nature or humans are selecting organisms based on their traits. The process of natural selection is very non-random. The founder effect and genetic drift, on the other hand, are somewhat stochastic. Now for the last mechanism, gene flow. Gene flow is the transfer of genes from one population to another. This way, the influx of alleles into a population can cause the allelic frequencies in a population to change from one generation to the next, which is the very definition of evolution. These mechanisms are all different ways by which evolution proceeds, and this is all encompassed under the term microevolution. That means evolution below the level of species. For example, Galapagos finch beak size adapting to the available food source without the finch population becoming a new species is called microevolution. Many creationists will agree that this type of evolution exists, noting the variation in breeds of dogs or horses, but they categorically refuse to acknowledge that macroevolution happens too, often because they don't know what macroevolution means. We'll discuss that in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.